Welcome to another episode of PWA series. In the previous video, we learned how to use the Webpack Workbox plugin. Now, in this video, we'll learn about the Web App Manifest and how to use it. Now, the Web App Manifest is the easiest thing you can do in a progressive web app, but I did leave it until the end on purpose. Because if you add a Web App Manifest to your app and you don't have a valid service worker, then you will most likely end up with your app icon on the home screen alongside a small Chrome logo on top of it. This signifies that this is not really a progressive web app, but rather a web page shortcut. So what is a web app manifest? Well, the web app manifest is simply a JSON file that explains to the browser what kind of app is this. So what is the name? What is the orientation? Where can I get the icon? And how can I display a splash screen? And what is the theme color, etc. So it's as simple as creating a JSON file and linking it to the head. So let's get right into it. So now in this project, in SRC, I'm gonna create a new file and call it manifest.json. Technically, you could call this file wherever you want, but for it to work in this project with this Webpack configuration, you have to call it manifest.json. And then I start by creating a JSON object, and then I'll start with a short name. And what am I gonna call my app? I'm gonna call it attendees. Now, I'll save and go back to the index.html, and then somewhere in the head, I just have to link to it. So I have to do link, and then rel manifest. So the relationship of this link is a manifest file and then manifest.json. By the way, if you're wondering where Heiss is, well, he, I don't really have a mirror, so this is my phone. Here, here he is, it's just making sure I make no live code mistakes. Now, before we continue, I'm just gonna run npm run build and then go to the browser, right click inspect and then go to application. And then you can now view the manifest over here. So I'm showing you this early on because it allows you to make sure you have a valid manifest file before you test it on mobile. So you see here we have a short name and now let's give it a name. The difference between the name and the short name, they could both be the same, but if you have two variations like Progressive Web App and PWA, then go with the shorter one for short name, which is gonna be shown on the home screen and the name is gonna be shown on the splash screen. But it's perfectly fine to have both of them exactly the same. And then uh, let's continue filling this. So then we're gonna have a name. And then uh, what is the background color of our splash screen? Well, I'm simply gonna do white. You can even type in white. And what is the theme color for our app? And the theme color is gonna style the status bar of the app. I will show you an example later on. And then I'm, I just chose the primary color. Orientation, you could leave it as is if you don't lock to any specific orientation. But if your app only works in portrait mode, you could do just portrait. Just gonna remove it because I'm, I'm not gonna lock it to anything special. And then the start URL. The start URL uh, means when the user clicks on the icon, which page should we open? And in that case, I'm just saying the landing page. So let's go back and build again and reload our browser. You see, we now have the name, the short name, start URL, theme color, and background color. I'm not locking the orientation. And the most important thing is the display. The display standalone will make your app look like a native app because it's gonna hide all the browser UI. And finally, we have to specify the icons. So I got this placeholder here from Mozilla Developer Network and I'm gonna change it to, uh, it's gonna be images and then icon dash, one of them is gonna be 192 and the other one's gonna be 512. And these images already exist over here, images, icon 192 and icon 512. Make sure to include the 512. This will uh, make sure your app works on devices with high resolution. Now that's all for the web app manifest. Let's go ahead and build and reload the page. We have the icons over here, and we have the first icon, 192, and then the second icon, 512. Now, you could add to home screen over here, and this will work as an add to shelf, but I'm not gonna talk about this right now. I'm gonna wait a few more weeks and then talk about desktop PWAs. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna deploy this apps. So I'm just gonna go into the dist folder and run Surge. I already configured Surge, but what Surge is is just an app that deploys my website every single time to a random URL. And this is very handy for testing. Now, I've got this URL. One thing you should take care of though is that it always opens by default in HTTP. So you have to go to HTTPS or else your service worker will not work. Now I can right click, inspect, and this is my PWA running. In a few minutes, we're, I'm gonna run it on my phone. But before I run it on my computer, I wanna make sure it has good performance, good accessibility, and I've got the PWA stuff right. So for that, 
who shall we ask? Well, we should ask Lighthouse. Right in DevTools, you go to Audits, and then leave everything as is, and then run Audit. But I'm not gonna run it on stable Chrome at the moment. I wanna future-proof my video a little bit. So I wanna show you the upcoming version of Lighthouse, which has some minor tweaks. So for that, I'm gonna open Chrome Canary, which is at the moment on Chrome 72. And I'm gonna open the same URL, and do the same thing, right-click, inspect, go to Audits, and start a Lighthouse report. And now we can see over here, we got a score for performance, 98, that's great. We also got a score for PWA, which is 88. So it does not redirect HTTP traffic to HTTPS. Unfortunately, I can't do anything about this using Surge unless I buy a certain account. But this is just for testing. When I deploy my app, I will make sure to redirect HTTP to HTTPS. And then this is something we forgot, adding a meta name theme color. And I'll show you how this shows up on mobile. So let's go back to our code. In the index here, we add a meta name theme color, and then we give it a content of this is our primary color. So now let's go back and check the accessibility score. And then for accessibility, we see there is a problem here that the background and the foreground colors do not have a sufficient contrast ratio. And that's very important when you want to make your website accessible. So I want to show you a cool trick that you can do. It works in stable Chrome at the moment. Just click on the color white here, and then it tells you that the contrast ratio is failing. So we are in kind of a tricky situation here. You could either drag it all the way to the bottom and make it black. And then uh, you see once I make it black, it passes the contrast ratio. But in this case, I really want to keep it white. So I'm going to undo. I can trick it and make the font bold. And once I make it bold, there will be sufficient color contrast and see if I go back here, the contrast ratio is passing. Now I'm gonna go ahead quickly and fix all of this stuff. So I'm gonna do font weight, bold, save, and then I'm gonna build and deploy again. So let's build again. And let's go into dist and deploy again. And now we have a new website where we can test. Now, before I show you how this looks like on my Android phone, I want to tell you that normally I wouldn't try the manifest myself. I would use real favicon generator. So let's take a look. So real generator.net is a great website where you could select your favicon picture. And then it's going to generate the picture for me. And I could also do some modifications for iOS. So for iOS, I'm going to make the background color white. And the reason why Real Favicon Generator is better than writing it yourself is that it gives you some additional meta tags that deal with different browser support. So there are some stuff that are unique for iOS and it will take care of them automatically. And when I'm done, I can scroll down at the end. I won't be placing my files at the top. I'm just gonna place everything in images and then generate your Favicon. Now it's gonna give you all of these meta tags that you can enter. You see, there will be a link rel manifest over here and there will be the theme color and all of the other ones, these are for Windows and then uh, other ones for Safari. So I would just copy all of these and download this file, put it where it should be and you will just have a little bit better browser support. Maybe I'll make a video in the future talking about iOS, but for now, I'm just gonna keep on using my own manifest.json. So now I just open this on my phone. So you see everything at the top over here is green. This is because of the meta name theme color. At the bottom, you see here there is add attendees to home screen. This is a temporary info bar that's only showing up on Chrome. I think it's gonna go away in the future because I've heard there will be an icon that's shown on the URL bar and then you click on it and that's gonna add to home screen. So for now, I'm just gonna dismiss this and I'm gonna show you how to add this to your home screen. So you just click on overflow menu, add to home screen, and now you'll get this screen and the screen asks you, do you want to add to the home screen? And actually there is a way using JavaScript to show this based on the user's gesture. Maybe I'll show it later on in a future video. And then once you're done, you do add and it's going to tell you adding to home screen. I can already close this tab and close all of Chrome. And then if I go back here, this is one of the apps. This is my app here. And now if I click on it, it's going to open in display standalone mode. And this is my PWA. Even if I go back here, you can't really tell a difference between a, a normal app or a different one. So let's open Twitter. See, they both look like real apps. So in this video, you learned about the web app manifest, 
Lighthouse and Real Favicon Generator. So that was all for this video and I'm gonna release a new video every single Wednesday. Not all of them will be about PWAs, you can take a look at the community tab on some of the things I'm working on and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye!